Hey, I'm Daniel Mumba Odoi, and I'm a travel content creator based in Australia. Now, I've just returned from an incredible overseas trip with Intrepid Travel called the Sacred Land of the Incas, traveling through two of South America's most breathtaking and historic countries, Peru and Bolivia. So in this video, I'm super excited to take you on a journey through the best places to see, the experiences you cannot miss, as well as a lowdown on what to eat, drink, and enjoy when you're next visiting Peru and Bolivia. So the first place you need to visit is the Amazon jungle. The Amazon jungle is home to more than 25,000 different types of plants, 4,300 types of birds, and 20,000 animal species. So I can absolutely guarantee that you will be astounded by the biodiversity and wildlife that you will see in its natural habitat. So I started my adventure in Peru in Lima, where I flew into Puerto Maldonado. Puerto Maldonado, hope I got that right. After touching down, you'll have a two hour boat ride along the Tambo Pata River, where you'll have time to acclimatize to the humidity and the heat. And for us, we were served a delicious bundle of fried rice while we made the transit. From there, your accommodation will be a jungle lodge. And for us, we stayed in the Cayman Amazon Lodge, dedicated towards the preservation and the protection of local ecology. Now this place was luxe. I didn't know what I was expecting, but it really felt like a paradise. And that really helped set the mood of being offline, having no reception. That's right, no Wi-Fi, no reception. And really just switching into the sights and sounds of nature that were around you. Something that as a city dweller, I often don't get to experience. And your tour leaders will guide you through the Amazon rainforest. They have an extensive and expansive knowledge and they're so passionate about the forest and its biodiversity that you can't just help but feel a deeper sense of appreciation and understanding of mother nature and of just how humble and small we are as humans. In the daytime, we got to see families of monkeys. We got to stop and appreciate how some of the smallest critters within the rainforest play such an incredible role in maintaining the ecosystem. And for nighttime, well, things get a little bit hairy. Our tour leaders were somehow able to point out critters and crawlies with just torchlight and their naked eyes, but they found frogs, crickets, snakes, and yes, spiders. Very big, hairy ones. We also had an opportunity to jump on some canoes and to float down the Tambopata River. One of my personal highlights was seeing the beautiful majesty of the macaws congregating together and flying overhead. It was just a beautiful and serene moment. And most importantly, using the time to relax and kick back, something that I implore you to do while visiting. Our lodge had beautiful hammocks. Our entire crew was able to lie back and hang up their feet after a long day of walking and hiking around. And the sunsets look absolutely divine. So after a couple of wonderful nights in the Amazon jungle and and hundreds of mosquito bites. It's now time to move on to our next spot, Cusco. Ah, Cusco, the city that takes your breath away. No, literally. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is located in the Peruvian Andes, about 3,400 meters above sea level. So, as it was my first experience being in an altitude of this height, as soon as I stepped off the plane, you start noticing a slight shortness of breath and don't be alarmed, don't be surprised. This is just natural being there and it may take your body a little bit of time to adjust. Of course, if you do know that you struggle with altitude sickness, it is recommended to bring some medication with you or you can enjoy a local Peruvian drink called the coca tea. Now this involves putting the coca leaf into boiling water, a leaf that has many medicinal properties and supports you with altitude sickness and lightheadedness or fatigue should you have it. Trust me, the locals will offer it to you if you're looking a little bit woozy. Now while in Cusco, one of the easiest and most affordable experiences to enjoy is simply walking around on foot. It felt like a city that had a hybrid of architecture from both the mortar-based rock builds of the Incan civilization, you'll notice a lot of the Spanish colonialist influence was building on top of those existing. So you'll often have these beautiful walkway and lower halves reflect the Incan build, but then the Spanish style of buildings resting on top of it. And it's really just remarkable. Every night you can see traditional Peruvian dances and music being performed at the Cusco Center of Native Arts, dedicated to preserving and sharing the traditional cultures of decades and centuries past. Dances and music was filled with story, charm, beautiful outfits. And if you didn't understand Spanish, well, fortunately the MC for the night delivered descriptions in Spanish as well as English. So you could understand the significance of the performances and of the acts that were being shared. Now, if you really dive into archeology, span you cannot miss going to Saxai Woman. Yes, you heard it right. Basically pronounced a sexy woman, which is a citadel based on the Northern skirts of Cusco. It is the remains and the ruins of a fortress that was built overlooking Cusco. The Incan architecture is world famous for its earthquake resistant structures built without mortar, iron, tools, or wheels. Now, while in Cusco, you cannot miss the opportunity to enjoy some Peruvian food, drink, and also purchases. So if you're traveling with a tour guide or you've befriended a local, ask them for their best recommendation for a restaurant that serves guinea pig. Yes, 
Guinea pig in Peru is considered a delicacy. I'd never seen anything like it considering that guinea pigs to me were a pet that we had at our primary school. Now, alpaca meat is also considered a delicacy, so if guinea pig doesn't quite make you easy, consider opting for that instead. Pisco sour is a classic Peruvian drink, both sweet and refreshing. I couldn't help myself and had to bring some home that I could share with my family. Now, a hidden gem of Cusco is the San Pedro market. Now, the San Pedro markets are where you need to be to buy just about anything. Here, I was overwhelmed with choice when it came to chocolate and coffee. Two items that in the last decade have become major export items for Peru, including the Capi coffee. You may have heard it, it's otherwise known as poop coffee. Now across the world, it's very, very hard to get your hands on this. It's usually quite expensive. So I was very, very happy that for about 25 solas or 10 Australian dollars, I could get my hands on some that I was able to enjoy with my partner back at home. Last but not least, you can't be in Peru and not pick up yourself an alpaca poncho. Fortunately for me, our trip leader was able to recommend a great local family run business. So touch up on your Spanish and learn how to find a good deal for yourself. Now, if there's only one place you could get to while visiting Peru, it has to be Machu Picchu. This 15th century citadel is one of the most iconic historical and archeological sites in the world. Not only is it a seventh wonder of the world, but an incredible mark of human design, ingenuity, and as an homage, the Incan civilization of centuries ago. There are a number of ways to reach Machu Picchu with Intrepid Travel, and it comes down to your personal preference. You can do a multi-day hike where you'll be supported with a trip leader, assistant, and porters the whole time. Alternatively, you can also take the train up to Machu Picchu if you're not feeling up for the hike. Intrepid Travel offers you the choice to take the Inca Trail, that's the one I took, or the Quarry Trail. Your tour leaders will literally walk you through Machu Picchu's history as it still stands today. And our tour leader and assistant, Marcia and Ronnie, felt like travel parents by the end of the trek as they fondly referred to our group as family. Our porters were also the real MVPs. Not only were they carrying all of our clothing of our group, but also a portable campsite. They literally brought a portable toilet, a portable kitchen, all of our tents, all the amenities and all the equipment that would make sure that we safely got there and back. Shout out to the porters, you guys are the real MVPs. For me, one of my most memorable experiences on the hike and one of the most emotional moments was on day two, when you ascend on the Dead Woman's Pass. This is one of the highest points of the entire Inca Trail at 4,215 meters. I can tell you when the sun's beaming down and you've got a couple hundred meters left of ascent, that really tests what you're made of. By the time we got to the top, there were tears of joy, tears of euphoria, and it was just incredible to have this sense of accomplishment from achieving a feat that upon first hearing, all of us had our doubts about our ability to make it. But traveling with a group and having such great energy and such great encouragement, not just from your tour guides, but the other fellow travelers, really made that one of the most special memories and special moments of my entire trip. Now imagine this, day one, day two, and day three of our four day hike, the weather was perfect. Only to wake up on day four at 3.30 a.m. to try and make sure that we could get to see the Machu Picchu Citadel in all of its glory. And guess what? We got met with wet weather. That's pretty awesome. no, but... If you're traveling between May and October, do note that that is the dry season. If you're traveling on the other side of the year from November to April, you may get hit with what we did. So just bear that in mind and make sure you've brought a wet weather poncho or a rain jacket. As I said, if there's one place you cannot miss when going to Peru, it is absolutely Machu Picchu. Go there, be amongst it, and you'll thank me later. Hola hombres, it is Daniel checking in. Now you may be able to get a sense of a change of scenery behind me because I've made it to the administrative capital of Bolivia known as La Paz. It's 3,600 meters above sea level. And as you can see from the urban sprawl, the entire city is just beautifully laid out amongst surrounding hills. It is crazy to try get around and to navigate on foot. And as you can probably hear around me, it is an electric buzz of activity. So as the final part of the adventure, we cannot miss the Witcher's Market. It's a series of shops that sell ointments, potions and various items and they go so far as using the stillborn llamas to bring about prosperity and good fortune. They'll have a particular ritual in which they'll bury it, send blessings and wishes for the spirit to take care of them. And similar to the archaeological charm of Cusco, so much of the street art and just walking amongst the very hilly cobblestones of La Paz can often itself just be an experience where you can just find little hidden alleyways and follow your curiosity to find hole in the wall shops and different little items that you can buy, including this hat. Given it's such an expansive city, the best way to see La Paz is from their cable car network. One of the most developed and modern cable car networks 
in the world. For just a few dollars, you can catch some cable cars across many of their colored routes across the city, where you can get a beautiful aerial view, often in the comfort of your own cable car. If you're unsure which routes to take, do a bit of research ahead of time, because I found myself a little bit clueless and a bit short of Spanish to explain where I wanted to go. Fortunately, with Google Maps and a few phrases, I was able to find my way back to where I was. So why should you consider booking your trip to Peru and Bolivia with Intrepid Travel? Well, it's three simple reasons for me. Number one, the people. Our trip and tour leaders, assistants, porters, bus drivers, and everyone else that helped us throughout the trip. The locals. Hearing and feeling their passion, talking about their families, their community, their ancestors, and the pride in their country really felt so infectious, so authentic, and often they can leave you with nuggets and local recommendations and tips to help you out and put you onto things that as a foreigner or as a traveler, you may not realize yourself. Secondly, it was the experiences. In between the key stops of the trip, we were kindly welcomed into local community groups that fed us, danced us, and shared us into their customs and rituals including a really beautiful homestay. These were by far some of the most cherished and memorable experiences that I had and really helped me feel connected to the way of life and not just the busy popular tourist spots, but actually going to the places that you may not know about yourself. For example, we were on our way to Bolivia. We stopped over in Puno, which is known for Lake Titicaca, the highest lake in the world. After taking a boat ride, we were greeted by the Euros people where they showed us how they live and exist on these incredible floating islands made with reeds as well as being kindly hosted for a homestay where we supported the families with many of their day-to-day -day errands and understood how they lived. And finally, traveling with Intrepid Travel is one of the most eco-friendly and sustainable ways of traveling. We took all of our rubbish, we made sure that we had minimal impact where we went and encouraged all of us to have reusable bottles or metal bottles throughout the entire trip. And most importantly, we were supporting local families through the crafts and services we were able to purchase and through tipping those that supported us, getting to where we needed to be and providing exceptional service. So make sure that Peru and Bolivia are on your travel list and I look forward to you enjoying the places, faces and spaces of those remarkable countries.